NASCAR ratings are up, while Formula One ratings have absolutely tanked in America. The NASCAR Cup Series race on Sunday at Phoenix may not have scored very well in the Jeff Gluck was it a good race poll, but that doesn't seem to have mattered to the people that tuned in to watch the race on Sunday because ratings were up 19% over Phoenix spring race of 2023. That's a massive accomplishment. It is worth noting that the 2023 race did go up against the Selection Sunday for March Madness, as well as the Players' Championship, the golf tournament as well. This weekend, it did not have to go up against those. Bristol will instead do that next weekend, so we'll wait and see what happens with that. But for the Cup Series, this is a massive accomplishment. To be up 19% is huge. To be up 11% year over year so far through the first four races is a huge accomplishment for Fox. This weekend's race drew in an average of 4.028 million viewers, up from the nearly 3.4 million viewers that they had last season. It topped out around 4.5, 4.6 million viewers during that 6.45-ish hour on um, Sunday, which is huge. Again, I can't stress enough how great it is to see ratings actually be up, to see viewership up. I will say this, one of the more interesting stats out there. Last year in 2023, the Cup Series had only four races that had more than 4 million viewers. Daytona 500, Fontana, which of course, because it was carrying the momentum of the Daytona 500, Chicago Street Race, everyone's interested in that, as well as Talladega, because it's Talladega. Through the first four races of this season, though, how many races are above 4 million viewers? All four of them. Again, a huge accomplishment. Something that NASCAR's worked really hard to do is just appeal to people, get them to tune back in, get them to come to the racetrack. And we're coming off a race that just had a sellout at Phoenix. Again, massive accomplishment. I know there's going to be a lot of people out here that are going to be naysayers. They're going to have to hate on it because that's what they have to do. They're going to say that Steve Phelps deserves to be fired, this and that. Just let it go at this point. Just queue up Creed's higher and just appreciate the fact that these ratings continue to go up, which is, again, a huge accomplishment because right now where they're sitting at they're sitting in a lot better seat than formula one we'll get into that in a second same with indycar nascar right now is doing what they need to do the fox booth has been a tick better this year with kevin harvick joining and adding a bit of professionalism to that booth the production yeah was still we need to zoom out a little bit more and pay a little bit more attention here but overall what we've seen so far in terms of racing too has actually been pretty good vegas pretty good uh, Atlanta, everybody's calling it the greatest race ever. It's fine. It might, probably, maybe top 10. I don't know. And then for Daytona 500, again, really solid race top to bottom. On the other side, Formula One has absolutely tanked in America. Play It's Going Down by Young Jock because I'm stuck listening to 2000s rap bangers right now on Spotify. Can't get them out of my head. So ratings are going down for Formula One. Really down. I mean, not just a little bit down. Like 40%. 4-0. 4-0. That's zero. Zero, that's a zero amount. Not good. 40% down for Formula One this year for the Saudi Arabian Grand Prix. So they had 920,000 viewers on ESPN, ESPN2 on Saturday. Let me preface this by saying that last year's race was on ESPN, flagship ESPN, as well as on a Sunday. This year's race was on a Saturday, again, in observance of Ramadan, and was on ESPN2. So it was down 40%. Last year, they had 1.523 million viewers that tuned in to watch this race. This year, didn't even crack a million. In fact, the Xfinity Series race on Saturday drew more than, than the uh, Formula One race. To the tune of NASCAR had about 1.1 million viewers. So nearly 150,000 more people tuned in to watch the Xfinity race. And it's not like the Formula One race started at a, a weird time either. Started at noon on Saturday. Again, they're comparable enough, and Formula One did not beat out NASCAR's second-tier division. And people, obviously, there's a lot of things that go into why, why Formula One's continuing to tank. Is Max Verstappen's dominance really impressive? Absolutely. 100%. What Red Bull has designed with that car continues to just absolutely wax the field, and hats off to them. Nobody else has been able to figure it out. That's on them. At the same time, though, it's not very interesting to watch for the casuals, and there was a total of 25. Woo! Woo! 25 overtakes on sa uh, Saturday uh, in Jeddah. 25 whole passes. 19 of them were shown on Sky, so they did miss six of them somehow on a 50-lap race. They managed to miss six overtakes. 25 overtakes means that there's one every two laps, and they still managed to miss six of them. Not ideal there. Ollie Behrman, the sensational rookie subbing for Carlos Sainz, accounted for the most of them at five. Um, yeah. Not great. I'm pretty sure that Kyle Larson passed like 118 cars on Sunday at Phoenix. 
So yeah, 25 overtakes is more than they had in one or two previous years. So there's that. But you can understand why it's not really pulling people in, right? It's not very, it's not an enticing product. Max just isn't very entertaining. His personality is not there. I think people might be, might not, not might be. People are just tired of Red Bull winning all the time, which is totally fair. And I know there'll be a ton of people being like, where was these same complaints when Lewis was winning? Well, there was me and eight other people watching when Lewis was out there dominating this country because Drive to Survive hadn't existed yet, or at least hadn't really popped off in, its term, in terms of popularity yet. And then once it did, everybody got sucked into 2021, which was, you know, thanks to the FIA for changing up the rules a bit to draw for, or Red Bull back into the competition, which created one of the better se- seasons we've ever seen, which is fine. At the same time, though, even when Lewis was out there dominating, he at least had a teammate that could sometimes keep up. Sergio's not even in the same zip code, half the time not even on the same half of the racetrack as Max. And at least Lewis did have some competition, whether that be from Ferrari when they cheated in 2019 or even Red Bull. Again, when the rules got changed in 2021, at least there was a bit of competition there. Max, there's just nothing. There's no competition. It's just him going out there, turning the wheel, being like, that was lovely. Lovely drive. All right. But why would people want to tune in for that? It's not entertaining. People want to see people compete for the win. Yeah, sure. Is the battle for third or fifth great? Absolutely. Was watching Kevin Magnuson hold up the rest of the field entertaining? For me, yeah. For the diehards, sure. But the people that are just tuning in, they're like, why is this guy driving two seconds slower? Why is the leader out 22 seconds? All right, I'm going to go over and watch women's college basketball or whatever. It's not very entertaining. And the ratings are only going to get worse. They head now off to Australia, two weeks' time, and then they head to Japan and then China. So for the East Coast of the United States, that's all going to happen in the middle of the night. It's going to be hard to to judge ratings and everything off of that. But, you know, when they do head back from the Far East, then we can get back to talking about how bad the ratings are right now. So let me know in the comments what you think about the ratings. And like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at BreakHard, Instagram and Twitter at BreakHardBlog.